With the tensions between Taiwan and China heating up, more and more people are wondering if Taiwan could defend against China. That is, are its defensive capabilities good enough? Today I will try to answer a part of that question, and that would be about tanks. Taiwan currently operates with M60A3 TTS and CM11 tanks, while China operates with a lot more variants ZTZ-96, ZTZ-96A, ZTZ-99, ZTZ-99A, and so on. But let's get something straight immediately. Taiwanese tanks are no match for the Chinese main battle tanks. There is no question about it whatsoever. But for China, it would be much easier to invade with their light tanks, against which the Taiwanese M60A3 and CM11 can go up against, and that will be a topic of this video. Keep in mind that Taiwan has received two M1A2 tanks, but those two are only for training and aren't really in active service yet. If you want to know more about how would the M1A2T fare against the Chinese tanks, check out my video on Abrams vs Chinese tanks. There is also the Yunpao fire support vehicle, which is armed with a 105mm gun and made on the CM32 Yunpao chassis, but it is not in active service yet and is still in the testing phase. Taiwan operates with 200 M60A3 TTS and 450 CM11 tanks, putting it at around 650 main battle tanks. China has around 750 light tanks, 250 ZTD-05, 400 ZTQ-15, and 100 ZTS-63A. Now, there is something that needs to be said about the terrain. The terrain in Taiwan is full of hills and is not very tank friendly. That is why lighter vehicles, like Chinese light tanks, would perform better on such terrain and that is what they have been designed for. Now, let's take a look at their capabilities. Taiwanese M60A3 TTS is pretty much what the US used to have back in the very late 70s. It was the first US tank to receive thermal sights before the M1 Abrams entered service. Its protection is very, very bad for modern standards, where pretty much any AT weapon would penetrate even its frontal armor. The only good thing about the tank is its first generation thermal sight, which can prove useful in combat and its main gun would prove more than capable of penetrating the Chinese light tanks, but other than that, it is not very mobile. It practically has no protection and there is really nothing that would give it an advantage over Chinese light tanks in combat. CM11 is a hybrid vehicle between M60 and M48, where the M48A3 turret is mounted on an M60A3 hull, while it also has incorporated fire control system similar to M60A3 TTS. Allegedly, it's an M1 Abrams fire control system, the old Abrams fire control system, sadly. That would also mean it has first generation thermal for the gunner, and sadly, just as it is the case with M60A3, this tank is no better. In fact, they are pretty comparable to one another, firepower, mobility and protection. In 2015, several of them were shown with added explosive reactive armor, but this explosive reactive armor would not improve its protection too much against modern threats, sadly, and most of them are still naked, how to say. Both M60A3 and CM11 weigh around 50 tons and are powered by a 750 horsepower diesel engine. So what about those pesky Chinese light tanks? ZTD-05 is an amphibious light tank, or rather an assault vehicle as it is dubbed by some sources. It is armed with a low recoil 105mm gun, which is a modified Chinese copy of the L7 gun, so pretty much the same gun as the Taiwanese tanks. The fire control system seems to incorporate a thermal sight for the gunner, but I could not find exactly what the generation of thermal it is in question. Now, of course, the protection of this vehicle is not great either, it would fall victim to most, if not all, AT weapons it would face. It is meant to be light, and it is, weighing at around 26 tons, which is almost two times lighter than the Taiwanese tanks. And it is powered by a 550 horsepower engine, making it more mobile than them too. I think that it should go without saying that it would have no problems penetrating the Taiwanese tanks simply because their armor protection is completely obsolete. And another apparent advantage of this vehicle is that it is amphibious. Not sure if it would be actually helpful, but just wanted to get it out of the way. Now, the ZTQ-15. This tank is much better than any other vehicle I've mentioned so far. It was designed for mountain warfare because of the areas on the border between China and India, 
where it was deployed back in 2020 during some border crisis. And of course, it would fit well on Taiwan's terrain. It has a lot more modern systems, such as both Gunner and Commander having access to second-generation thermals as well as soft kill active protection system in the form of laser warning receivers, which warn the crew when the tank is being lased by a laser rangefinder and laser guided missiles. On top of all of that, it has added explosive reactive armor on the front of the hull and the turret. How effective would that explosive reactive armor be though, I have some doubts, since the base armor is just simple steel, and it, it is not very thick either. I forgot to mention that it is also armed with a 105mm rifled gun, which would be more than enough to go through the Taiwanese tanks. The tank weighs around 33 tons and is powered by a 1000 horsepower diesel engine, making it the most mobile tank out of the bunch. At last, there is the ZTS-63A. This vehicle is amphibious and is the lightest, weighing at around 20 tons. It is also, just like other Chinese light tanks, armed with a 105mm gun. But unlike any other tank, it appears to have no thermal sights, in which case it would be behind the Taiwanese tanks. This vehicle is getting replaced by the ZTD-05 though, and only around 100 were left at the start of 2022. And maybe there are even less of them now. This makes it very unlikely that it will be used, unless the situation gets desperate. Now, of course, tanks would not fight alone and there would be many other units in such conflict. Most of these tanks would get penetrated by anything the enemy throws at them, meaning that whoever shoots first, wins. And most of the other vehicles, such as infantry fighting vehicles, would pose a great threat for tanks on both sides. And comparing all of that would make this video an hour long. This is just to get the general perspective on the capabilities of the tanks on both sides, not as an actual representation of what would happen. Sadly for Taiwan, its two main advantages, the M1A2T and the Yunpao fire support vehicle, are not in service yet. Both would pose a much greater threat to the Chinese tanks than anything else. M1A2T because, well, it's an Abrams, and Yunpao because it is light and would perform greatly in such terrain, making it very deadly for the invading troops. That would be all. If you like my content, you can consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Have a nice day.